All right, you guys, welcome to a new series we're going to start doing with some foreign players and current players. Uh, but I got a really good guest on for all my Clemson fans out there, um, former four-star recruit, Anderson, South Carolina native, T.L. Hanna legend, um, linebacker that come through Clemson, wore a really nice beard. Uh, some of his accolades will be being a national champion, um, being the top linebacker in the country his last year. And many more things left with many rings, but joined by my brother, um, Ben Boer. What's I've up, never, bro? I've never heard anyone say my uh, high school ranking four star. <laughs> four star. Look, I hey, appreciate that. Man. Honestly, <laughs> that one threw me off a little bit. Uh, I don't know if anyone's interested me. Uh, four star, come out, Taylor. Like, come on, let's go. There's a difference. Come on, man. It doesn't matter. Come on, man. What's up? Don't, like, I feel like there's equity in it, but yeah, no, it is. You earned it though. Looking you earned, back, you earned, you earned no stars. You earn those stars, but yeah, uh, joined by my guy. How you feeling, bro? I'm living the dream, bro. I'm trying to. Today's Thursday. I got date night with my wife in a couple hours, and then after that, it's the weekend, baby. So we're close to the end of the week. Come on, we're adults out here. All right, so we're gonna go down memory lane. But right now, I just want to get into, bro. We're both officially like I'm a year out, a couple years out. Clemson alum, uh, out here in the working world, making some stuff happen. Uh, tell me this. All right, now when you watch the games, what makes you proud? What make what makes you the most proud as it comes to football alum? <clears throat> I'll I will switch your question was what makes me the most hype is when I see this probably not be your question actually, but when I get most excited watching the games is when I see a guy on defense just get rowdy, like run his mouth a little bit, talk a little junk, get up in people's faces. I feel like with the way of the world. That is that doesn't happen as much anymore. So when I see guys sprinkle it in, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That definitely, I, definitely. Uh, obviously makes me most proud when we freaking win games and we don't play like crap. But when guys are running around smacking dudes in the mouth, talking a little junk, I get rowdy. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And that definitely was uh we'll, we'll get into that i think that's definitely like you kind of definitely established that culture on the defensive side throughout clemson um before we go down memory lane which i think fans are going to really enjoy but yeah you got a lot of great clemson moments when it, especially when people think about the swinney era like i was there for a good portion you were kind of the building blocks into what it became my five-year run um what made you decide to go to clemson i'm 25 minutes away <laughs> Like you, right. uh, my grandparents went to school there. My grandpa uh, played football. The uh, My parents went to school there. My older brother played baseball there. My little sister uh, went to school there. Uh, all of my cousins went to school there. So it was kind of destiny with like my family background and also us being so close to the university. Uh, I grew up a Clemson fan, grew up running on the field after we won and taking guys gloves and armbands like i i lived that so obviously wanted to go there to play play football i was just waiting on them freaking meatheads to offer me a scholarship thank god <laughs> coach venables got there and, and finally offered me uh i would have been going to like stanford or like U, uga so yeah it was kind of destiny for me to go to clemson yeah. What about the culture like made you like excited about or intrigued about going to Clemson? I feel like it's tough for people that are outside of our circle to really see what makes Sweeney unique and yeah. like, will have an idea, but they really don't understand until you like actually play and are in the weeds and in the facilities and nobody really just like truly one. I think he's just like an, he's a great, christian husband father and just happens to be a good football coach and i think right. it's like grounded enough with his faith and is strong enough in his faith where he leads with that with a lot of his decision making which allows him to be unique where he obviously on one end cares about the stars and how athletic you are and what you can do from a football standpoint but really Sounds cliche, but I feel like he truly cares about the guy's heart and like graduating guys and seeing what they're able to do after ball. And I think him leading uh, from like a decision-making standpoint through that lens 
I don't know, just attracts guys that are may not be five star dudes, but are try hard guys like me and you and yeah. can still get it done from an athletic standpoint, but also like impact the university in other areas. Um, and then he also hires good coaches that are allowed to really that are able to kind of focus really in on the football aspect. But yeah, I think Sweeney is just like one, I think he's just strong in his faith and that yeah. allows the, to be a really good leader. Facts. For sure. I would definitely pick it back. That's a big reason why I even went to Clemson or wanted to go to Clemson was just seeing the culture he built. And on that note, you <clears throat> you came you came in your first year was 2013. 13 to 16. Yeah. So I, I, I feel you like your you're you I thought you I thought you had a six. I thought you were there six years. I was there six. I was there from uh, 16 to 21. So it's like because yours is three years yeah. was four seasons. I was five years, six seasons. That's um wild. it is wild, but I was there for a minute. I would have a minute um uh, rick but, i wish uh, I had an opportunity though like bro, looking back in that season when you're there like oh i want to get out and get into the real world and be an adult and this freaking right. sucks dude. like the real world sucks i'd rather like be playing football for six years you know so like looking back yeah uh, especially you get a little nil now bro yeah like if i i didn't have the opportunity to red shirt so i was just four straight um yeah. if i would have had an opportunity to spend two more years there that would be sick and definitely would have done it. Yeah, bro, it was a it was a big blessing. Um, I'm trying to think. So y'all, yeah, I say 13. I feel like was around the time like because Clemson when Coach Swing got the job, obviously they were respected. We've always been like a notable program. Yeah, but I feel like your years there was when the tide started to shift. So what people have gotten so accustomed to now, like playoffs, national championships, yeah. ACC championships, like us really running the ACC. What like was there a point that you felt it shifted or a game? So my freshman year was when we played Ohio State in mm. I think the Orange Bowl, I believe. It was, it was the Orange Bowl, yeah. We won that game. Um, sophomore year, we won the ACC, beat Oklahoma in the Russell Athletic Bowl. Not a big bowl, but like they had Baker Mayfield. They were a good team. We were all ranked. And then junior year, like we're, we're undefeated going into the Natty and came right. super close so i mean i knew we were a good football team but it really didn't hit me that we were like elite elite until probably the end of our our junior season yeah um so we had some dogs you know <laughs> for sure <laughs> and then even going into senior year like we were we were elite we had some really good players and the uh, kind of foundation was different for me because I kind of really step into a leadership role. But right. yeah, junior, junior, senior season for me because my like role and responsibility grew, you know. So I was able to kind of see and experience more. My freshman year, I didn't freaking do nothing. I had 37 snaps. They put me on kickoff because I knew I'd hit people. Right. Uh, in sophomore year, I think I started three games. So played a little bit, uh, but still a little young pup out there, bro. We had like – you got Grady Jarrett's of the world, Vic Beasley, Stephon Anthony, yeah. and then you got this short white boy out there, like looking at the <laughs> freaking just oddball. So, and I didn't say a word. Like I was probably nervous the whole time. So junior yeah. senior year, I was like, all right, like we got some dogs out here. We're pretty good. Yeah. And, um, going into senior year and we freaking lose to Pittsburgh. That was a swift kick in the face. Luckily everyone else in the top 10 lost, So we stayed. Right. Uh, but let, let me, let me, you said a couple of moments. I don't, I think people really enjoy from your, from your career is mm -hmm. I think about the 2014 season where that was when Cole Stout took over in the Russell athletic bowl. And I, the moment I remember from you is getting that pick. Walk us through that play. If you remember <laughs> yeah, but it just, it just fell into my hands. We were – I ended up starting against uh, Oklahoma because the game before, Stephon got uh, a targeting call in the second half against USC. Trash call. But I'm like, hey, thank you, God. Let me get the opportunity. <laughs> he gets ejected, has to sit out the first half against uh, Oklahoma. And I was me and Tony, so just – we had plenty of time to prepare and I think that's what helps like Venables be an incredible coach. Cause you give him any time to prepare. We're yeah. going to be complete. And then me, like 
I know that's the really only advantage that I have is just preparation and like knowledge of the game. So I had weeks to prepare for Oklahoma and we got, we're the number one defense in the country, like in every category. That's what I mean. People debate who's the best. Like we probably, that would, I would say our 14 defense was, I mean, we're top two. I only know what the other uh, one would be or two would be greatest defense of all time uh at clemson we were like unanimous number one every category so you get freaking grady in front of you you got shaq lawson in front of you you got carlos like everyone is elite on the the defense all like seniors and uh yeah. prepared. and that play call i just got super lucky <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh buddy i don't know who was the dude that was their quarterback it wasn't baker it was the other number nine um Trevor Knight. Trevor Knight was the quarterback. Trevor Knight, yeah. Good people. Uh, so he threw a freaking trash throw, uh, bounce out the receiver's hands, and I'm just sitting there. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And <laughs> Bob didn't weave, smooth 5 to to uh, the end zone, and it was so hyped, dude. Um, but, yeah, just had plenty of time to prepare for them and made the most out of the moment. No, for sure. And I think that moment was huge. Walk me through, uh, I think about the 2015 season. And I actually came to this game as a recruit, bro. It was um, my, so that was my junior year in high school. No, it had been my senior year, senior year in high school. Rain game, hurricane, whatever it's called. Hurricane, whatever. Notre okay. Dame at the crib, <clears throat> 2015. To Boy. me, is like top five like Clemson core memories on the football field. Oh, for sure. That that game like is like, right. yeah, it's it's actually Clemson football history. Walk me through just what you remember about that game and winning that game, and then the, the whole mantra, you know, like that was when BYOG yeah, became yeah. a thing. Yeah, that was that game. My, one of my top three games of all time: Notre Dame, Louisville at home, we're playing Lamar, and then the Natty, uh, my my senior year, but. That game, <clears throat> that was the first time we played Notre Dame in and and forever. I don't know, but maybe ever. I don't even remember. But Notre Dame, whether they're good or not, you just know you're playing Notre Dame, which is right. stupid and annoying. And we knew they were like a solid team. But you know how Sweeney is. He'll hype up throughout the week. We're playing Notre Dame. Like, <laughs> blows it up, trying to make it not – he balances it. He doesn't want to make it bigger than you – know Right. What it really is. And then when it's a really small team, hey, these guys can come in and punch us in the mouth. Got to be prepared. So he balanced it really well. So letting us know, hey, all of this uh, history of Notre Dame, but also like, hey, these dudes are, are normal like you. They put their britches on just like you. And right. still in the back of my mind, I know like it's Notre Dame. I'm going to prepare for this game. So – Obviously, was just really ready for anything they threw at us. Their freaking O line were all like six foot seven. Well, I'm <laughs> barely six foot. I got super short arms. So, any blitzes, I'm uh, freaking begging Coach V to not put me on a blitz because I'd get just engulfed. But, and then the rain adds a super right. factor to the game. So, I, don't, I, mean, I, I had a good game. I, I think, uh, I had a, a force fumble, uh, fumble recovery. Uh, I graded out really well. And then the last play of the game with, uh, with me and Carlos was super cool way to end it. So, yeah, just – that's, that's all. A, every, everyone remembers the um, – you know, talk me through that last play because that's everybody, everybody remembers that last play. And then also everyone remembers uh, you just diving into the water on the field. I tripped. I tripped. Everyone, oh, you tripped. <laughs> Yeah, I trip. I'm not athletic. I trip. So that play, we like in that down and distance and in that formation they were in, it was like 95%. They're doing that QB uh, lead draw play essentially. Yeah. And so they get in the formation. I think they flipped the back, I believe. And it just triggered in my head like, are they really about to run this stupid like QB lead draw? Like, you're going for a two point. We, that's, this is, that's not. Like and so like uh any short yardage play when it's we'll say when you have like one yard, ninety this is rough 
uh, this is me yeah. being on for a couple of years, so like rough. If it's like a short yardage play with like one yard to go, more times than not, it's going to be a run. Two yeah. yards to go, and more times than not, it's going to be a run. When you get to three yards, it, the percentage drops drastically, and it goes to – uh, like the th the three to four yard range goes to pass. It's just what offenses typically do, unless you're a freaking Iowa and you run the rock like 80 times a game. Most right. offenses, when it gets to like a two two and a half three yard range, they go to pass. So they're on that two point conversion, which I believe is like two and a half yards where that little divot is. I'm not really sure. I don't know the exact. Yeah. Number. More times than not, <laughs> on a two point, a lot they don't run. And so they get in this formation, they flip the back. I'm pretty sure. And it triggered in my head. They're doing this QB lead draw. This is stupid. So me and BJ, uh, we, uh, we, me and BJ shift. I, you, I think you pulled up, you see us kind of shift over a little bit because we knew the play was coming. And then you just bro, you just fill the hole, you know, like yeah, running up the rock or up the middle, D line, bro, fill it. And I'm just going to blast into the, I think the, the run back was the lead blocker. And I just put my freaking face into his chest. And Carlos got off a block. And then we both, Carlos, I think Carl, Carlos made most of the play. Uh, Kevin Don helped out a lot. Uh, yeah. Everyone just filled their gap, bro. And game's over. I freaking start running. Boom, trip, somersault. Luckily, I <laughs> off super smooth. And everyone thinks I just did like a, a front flip for no reason. No, my foot, my, my big toe got stuck in the ground. So wow, I would never do that. Run off, bro. And like running down the field. And I'm like pointing at their sidelines, talking so much junk. Rain's falling, super sick. Yeah, it was fun. No, legendary, literally legendary moment in like the Clemson football, especially Sweeney era. A uh, yeah. couple more moments I want to get to. Um, I think so. My my retro year was 2016, the one year we had together, and I look back, like that's a game that I think like really solidified us nationally. And then the hype around that Louisville game, not a game in the Valley, you know what I'm saying? It's like everybody's watching across the country. And Lamar Jackson's on his crazy run. Obviously, we've all seen what he's became to be in right. the league. So it was no no fluke at all. Uh, Heisman Heisman winner. And he, they were coming to the valley. Obviously, him and Deshaun were like the kind of the, the headliners. But that game to me was just like Nuts. legendary. Loud. Uh, loud. Loud. Like so the loudest. Loud, bro. I remember going out for our first possession on defense, and I had to scream like as close as our uh, heads are on this screen. That's how close I was to Christian Wilkins trying to set the front screaming bendy could barely hear me that's how loud it was super cool environment that's the that's, the, that's probably the loudest that in notre dame is the loudest i've ever heard that stadium get and it was just consistent and it was just like a nail biter back and forth right. they ended up coming back i believe in the very end but like we were playing really really well as, as a defense so super loud and it made it difficult on us i'm having to set the front because freaking Kendall and Kendall helped out a little bit. Dorian did not ever set up run. Dorian never would line up. Kendall was still a little bit younger than me. I think Kendall was a, a year younger, but I just yeah. I set the front. I called the plays. So I'm having to scream my freaking tail off because it's so loud. So like that obviously impacts the offense, but it's kind of screwing me over because none of these freaking three technique or these D line. Right nowhere to go and i got a freaking a sam backer who i love dorian but he's a meathead and doesn't know how to line up and then our dbs um they usually were able to get the call so tell me about tell me about winning cool. the game because that's what i like i remember obviously people clemson fans i know how i went down so it gets down to the wire marcus edmund comes up with one of the biggest plays in clemson football history because that, that 2016 season won it was like six or seven games that came down between a one possession score. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. Really, <laughs> that, that whole Edmund season balled out. He, Bro. Marcus Edmond, low key saved that season multiple times, <laughs> twice. So it's, it's like uh, pick in the end zone. Pick, yeah, pick. He had the right. pick against NC State. State in the end zone. State. NC State. Okay, I'm tripping. Yeah, yeah. NC, NC State. Tied on the bottom of the pile. Yeah, big play at the very end. Bro. I believe we had like 
over 100 snaps in that game. There it was, was nice, it was a crazy game. So many plays uh, that they had on offense, and we were cooked. I remember after I did, like, on that play, I blitzed, got nowhere, just got stuffed because I was so cooked. And I see Marcus make the stop. I brought just run down the field and just collapse. That was the most <laughs> cooked I've ever been in a game. I, I almost, I'm almost positive that we had like over a hundred plus snaps. Like it was like it was, it was something crazy. It was something crazy. Something sure. stupid, bro. And I did, never got subbed out because these like, bro, I got no one else to line these meatheads up. So I had to stay. And thank God, I'm like thankful I got the snaps to play. Right. But was so cooked, dude. But yes, yeah, such a fun game. So back and forth. A lot of big plays. And that was just electric. Oh, buddy is stupid fast. And yeah, he is. Especially in, like seeing it in, I've been seeing on TV, but you see it in real time, how well, fast Lamar is moving. They were like, bro. Probably, because I had, thank God, I had, a, I had a, I prepared my freaking tail off and had a good game. And I had like three TFLs against him, where it's, bro, me and him in the backfield, nobody else. That's and scary. I don't know how I didn't get sauced up, but. Like I got, I, I'm like I, I say I'm not an athlete. I have good balance though, and I understand how <laughs> to tackle. But imagine being in front of ninety thousand people, and yeah. you, you and Lamar Jackson with the rock in front of you, nobody else, and he's <laughs> but it gets really tight. And thank God uh, I made the tackle. But that right. that's like out of uh, stressful things that can happen in life. I'd be on an island with uh, Lamar Jackson. That's up there. No, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely frantic and fearful. Think about it, bro. Uh, <laughs> like, really think no, about no. it. No, I know. Especially, but he's he's special. Like, he's he's he's, he's, cool. he's continuing to prove that. Uh, I don't know. Months. He's not getting paid right now. I know he's, like, having some contract issues. I know yeah. he's asking for the house. Yeah, but, I don't know. He, he, he's going to get something. Like, he, he's, he's a deserving. He's track and sees that mug's all guaranteed. Right, I don't get it. Like, I want my, and I, th I think he, he don't have an agent either. So he, I know, yeah, he's just, he's his own agent. So it's, uh, it's interesting how it plays out. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think, the 2016 season. That's obviously your people will never forget because we won a national championship. Uh, one of the three we've won so far. What do you remember about that season? Because when I would think of it, I just remember a bunch of nail biters. I remember Auburn. I remember um, NC State. Louisville, Pittsburgh. The FSU, the FSU game was crazy. What, down to the last play. Down in tally was crazy. Um, they were I remember we we did lose the pit. Also, is another game that came down to the wire that year? That was uh, it. Syracuse was kind of close. Bro. Syracuse was close. Syracuse, they were the spread offense. We go into the game. These dudes are freaking garbage. This spread is super easy to defend. They, they always had our number, though. They've always had our number. Always had our number. They came out and doing this, like, speed option type stuff. And I, I, I had such a bad game because I just – the game plan we had was not for what they did. So, they come out, like, doing some, like, not Georgia Tech type stuff, but kind of, like, some option type stuff. And our defense was not ready for that. So, it threw us in a freaking curveball. I'm getting just sliced and diced. Can't make any tackles. I don't know how to line anyone up. I go, V, take me out, bro. Like, I don't understand what they're doing. Because I'm just – I'm so locked in on preparation. Hey, this is yeah. the book on what they're going to do. This is what they've done right. historically. This is what they've done this year. This is what they're about to do against us. And they come out and don't do any of it. And Pittsburgh, yeah. same way. So, we had a lot of close games, dude. No, that's what I remember just like the whole season was – really like a testament to that year was like we're good and we're about to be great. But, like, it was kind of like – getting over that threshold because then after that season bro we went on a, like Clemson went on a crazy run yeah. I thought that year was really symbolic of what a program was we're like we're like there and we just got to keep like pushing inch by inch and inch and that season was special um kind of last couple moments cap off that season was one of my favorite moments that year it was obviously the Fiesta Bowl one was one of my favorite bowl games we got a PS4 like come on bro we're free so I, I, it's still I have the same PS4 in the box have bro, I, so, I sold mine uh to adrian dunn my roommate at the time i was in a, i was in a, i needed some money bro i was it i was uh, hanging on, i was on scholarship you're a roommate, hey you're a trash roommate he 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 was like bro he's like 
can I get this off of you? I was like, you can have this PS4. Yeah, you hundred bucks. It probably was like a hundred bucks for my gas for the week, whatever. Um, but I do remember <laughs> that Ohio State game because one, that was another game people really talked up because they had a really oh. good team. Kurt, Curtis Samuel, yeah, uh, yeah. JT, B- you know what I'm saying? Like all these guys on that team, and they a lot of those guys went on to have really good professional careers. But it was so much hype around that game, and like everyone thought they were about to beat us, Urban Meyer, all that stuff. They didn't want to be there, bro. They just did not want to be there. It was a boring game, like bro. It was it was boring. Thirty-one zero was crazy in a playoff game. On y'all's end, for us, we just chilled, dude. Like I have no core memories from that game because it was you know I mean? <laughs> like, bro, what are y'all doing? Y'all clearly don't want. To, they had no effort. It was easy. Yeah, it was a boring game, like for us on defense at least. Right. Yeah, 31 zip. And then that was all she wrote. But that, to me, that was like one of the games where, because that, that's become a low key rivalry during like the past. Yeah, a little bit. From six, some six from 16 to then, like, obviously, we had the big game in 19 and they smacked us in 20. Um, the Ohio State games always had a little spice there. Uh, the, going up. Memories are like not even really, not even the question you asked was like biggest memories over the year. And I always like the games were fun, but being in a, like the locker room, there was multiple times where like, the main things that I remember that I think really helped that team and then the teams following where we'd be doing stadiums or doing one mm-hmm. tens and nah, dudes, like we're, we're running two or three more, you know, we people be, hated you for that, bro. Uh, I remember right. Sean Pollard and we were doing a one tens in the indoor and yeah, we're doing three more for Auburn and no, no. No, I'm not. About to cry, bro. He's like, he's good people, but he's a, he's a freshman. Yeah, Tight. I know. But people, people, people hated not you. Not running more. I'm tired. I'm about to throw up. I'm like, bro, let's box in. Like, I promise you, we're right. about to three more. And then in the indoor, like, same thing. And bro, people hated it. But that's like as corny as it sounds now, and like cliche. But in that moment, yeah, you have to really like dig in. Like, you know, like. Put your head down, like not worry about nothing else and just work. That's, I feel like, was really correlated and like trend, like it just translated to that team where we get into the fourth quarter. Now nah, we're going to yeah. put our head down, you know, we're going to grind right. this out because we've done it you know, in practice plenty of times. Exactly. You know, so right. in all the games throughout the season and then going into Alabama, like I think the, like very it was it wasn't a lot but you know there was plenty of we did a lot of just extra effort type stuff it, it all it all came to fruition and that game bro, to me does, you know? bro it all came to fruition that game in the setting stage for this last couple of questions is to me the year before like Sweeney always says it's like one thing to think you belong it's one thing to know you belong like the year before 2015 was like we just we thought we belong and it was we the, the program made it that far the yeah. 2016 team was like, bro, we didn't ba- been battle tested. Right? We didn't been here before. Right. We're not like overwhelmed by the, the A on the side of the helmet. It's like yeah. we deserve to win just as much as y'all. And so walk me through that game because that was that that game was just so special because mm-hmm. like obviously the one in 2018 was a blowout, which is that was cool to just say that right. Clemson did that in the program. But then to go down to the wire against Alabama, that's one of the best playoff I mean championship games ever. Yeah, I think it was just, again, a testament to the team. We had some gritty dudes, you know, and that's like leading from January of 16 through like all the like workouts, yeah, uh, skills and drills, mat drills. Like we were kind of battle tested and then ha- we're even more battle tested uh, throughout the season. So uh, we just had a tough team that was willing to give a little extra effort and that like – the defense, we know we had that player led meeting, the 7 a.m. meeting, uh, from like Wednesday all the way up to get to game day, where we'd meet yeah. as a defense and we'd have like an hour going through film. Like, I promise you, like Alabama ain't doing that. You know, a lot of their teams aren't doing that when it comes to nut cutting time. So I think that team was really willing to just give a little bit extra effort you know we had some, obviously some good players but not and we we weren't full of five stars we had our fair share but i know guys that were just gritty willing to work and then when it gets down to the fourth quarter and it's nut cutting time that's when you kind of really see like who's made of it you know right. and, and we came out on top you know so yeah. i think the work really ended up showing uh throughout the preseason and throughout the season 
So where that last play, you know, or last drive, like really, really can see who who's about it, who's battle tested. Before we, before we get off, one of the things I think is legendary is your post game speech on the podium, trophy in hand. Like, what did that moment mean for you? And what did that moment mean for like the Clemson family? Yeah, that one was totally unscripted. I don't know where it came from. I knew after we won the game, like, okay, I had a good game. I'm probably going to have to say something. I'm like, bro, just don't drop any F-bombs. Don't cuss. It's like my freaking moms and pops are in the stands. Just don't say any cuss words. So, yeah, and I also felt like it was, like, one, trying to look through that lens, like, don't cuss, bro. But also, like, I really felt the need to kind of shout out to the guys who – helped me become like the player that I was and then like, the leader that I was like those guys had a really yeah. big impact in my life from, a, on the, from the football career and with our program like how like me and Deshaun led my senior year we wouldn't have been able to lead that way if we didn't have like guys like Grady Jarrett and like Stefan Anthony and Eric McLean like show us the ropes you know so like, I felt like I'd be wrong and selfish to uh, like say it was all because of the, like our own doing, you know, we had a lot of right. help on the day and had a lot of good leaders in our life to like helped us from just like a playbook standpoint, but also just from like a communication, like discipline, hard work standpoint. And I'd be doing a disservice to the program to not let like the nation know like what, like who really built the foundation, you know? Right. So yeah, we, we were the ones that got on the field and like won that game, but there was a lot of other pieces that needed to be, uh, shout it out For but sure. it was just still just wing that mug you know like, like don't, <laughs> don't let this thing rip you know and i felt like that's all when i've ever done like public speaking or any ride like don't really i have an idea of what i want to say and i just like will fire off the hip and hope to god that it makes sense so and there's still a little adrenaline pumping, you know, like, bro, so hype. Bro, you got Reese Davis with the microphone behind you. you I know, I know. Daddy championship, TVs, um, and the people, the stands are still full, like all Clemson fans. So it's like, so cool. Super cool. All right. Cool Speed round. We got a couple more minutes. Speed round. Think about it. Keep these short and concise, but give me a little juice on all these things. Uh, one of them, I'm going to say the best one for last. All right. Syracuse okay. game, 2016. You suplex a man, and he, his family will never live that down. How did you? How do you feel about that play? I feel great. Dude. That, imagine being like on the other car seat. You know, you, you get a grown man grab you and toss you over the freaking head. I don't know that dude like that, but that was uh, definitely one of my uh, more fun memories at uh, Clemson. Do you want to run this one back since uh, you're screwing out again? No, no, it don't matter. It's on you. It's okay. On you. Perfect. Um, I think about that moment. I think about um, I had two more moments. I think about that moment really quickly. <laughs> fun story. Fun story for Clemson football fans oh, is God. 2016. The, the, this like that summer before Ben came up with a quote. Well, he didn't come up with it. One of our mentors came up with it, but he got everybody wristbands. And I I swear to this day, I still see guys wearing this wristband. Not even joking. It was B A B. O G W D. I don't know. B A B A B. Say it. O G. <laughs> What's it mean? Um, it means B A B word or go to work. Yeah. Get to work. Yeah. I feel like we were at, we were at Pop Belly Deli. We're at Pop Belly Deli. One of our mentors. Options in life with any decision you make. You can yeah, be, any decision you make. You can be a victim. Woe is me. But life is hard. Or you can nut up and take responsibility. And we told, and Brian were talking about it. My like, brother, that right. sounds freaking lame. No one, that's not going to resonate. You would either be a blank or you can get to work with anything, you know? So, yeah, we kind of look into well, that all the decisions we made throughout that year, like looking through that lens. And but you bought everybody wristbands. He bought everybody, like, I think it was like you order like bulk, like 120 wristbands uh, um, in white and black. And I, I thought like that was a phase where everybody wore wristbands and dudes had it on like the entire year. Some dudes, I swear to this day, I might, I think some guys still had that wristband. I'm not even joking. We have it. We sell them at our, our uh, at the gym. We have it spray painted. You go to our uh, a little plug, had to. Yeah. Look at our baby Anderson, Greenville Clemson. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Uh, in our Anderson spot, we have it spray painted the like, abbreviation on our yeah. walls. And you have like 
moms come in. What does that mean? Like, uh, be a baby or get to work? Right. You can. You can always make it PG. All right, finishing up, but we got a lot of stories to get into. This is gonna be the only one we'll we'll do. I definitely gonna have to bring you back on. Um, last thing for you is just like, what has it meant to be a part of the Clemson family? It's definitely been fun. You know, I feel like a lot of programs try to use that verbiage that yeah. like this university or this program's a family, but I feel like I can speak to ours specifically, obviously we played there, like where you can, we can go back at any point, you know, like Sweeney is like a text away, a phone right. call away. I've probably needed like one or two favors over the past, uh, six years of my life when we opened our Clemson location I'm like bro can you do a video and like shout us out oh yeah yeah Boom. within 30 minutes filmed it sent it to us you know and he's got a million me's to have to kind of right. deal with and they're always like a phone call away uh obviously they're busy and we're not blowing them up because they got freaking games to win but yeah we've done they've allowed us to do plenty of events there like mm. and it's not even just me like with my career you have guys who who may have not have played a little bit or like or a walk yeah. on and they're all right. like a phone call away you know and that's top to, uh, the bottom with their program i could call coach v right now and he would answer what's up meathead and we talk yeah. hours you know so i think that's all one right. submit to coach sweeney like i will to the day i die always have i would never have a bad thing to say about that man he's a he's elite he's creme de la creme yeah. he's just like top of the top from just a man standpoint, but also from a, just a leader, dude, there's none like him. So I think yeah. having him at the top of the program, like you can't be a turd and work for a coach when you'll weasel yourself out, you know, like, and he yeah. so I think who he is as a person just kind of has a trickle down effect uh, throughout the whole program, you know, and even the community. The Even university, the, uh, the whole whole thing's blowing up now because we're freaking good at football, and there's all these resources now. Because, I mean, there's a lot of people that have helped out, but old buddy's a, a huge part in it, you know. And just like sure. being your people, and you know, I think, and being grounded with his faith has allowed just the whole thing to blow up and create fruit in other areas. So, and that allows yeah. us to be like a tight knit group, you know, where a lot of the right. team stays close. Um, I, we got, I'm in a group text with all the guys in that I played with my senior year. We texted right. every day, <laughs> literally still like yeah. me, Usler, AD, Dorian, right. uh, Ryan Carter, Prevost. Right. Just like those are guys that I put with my senior year and literally almost every day we still chop it up in the group text. I mean, it's been six years now, you know? So I think it starts it always starts at the top. And we got a freaking a good dude. He's just he's elite, you know. So that allows everything else to be just led well. Bro, well, thank you for your time. I know we gotta get off here in a second. Um, we just wanna Clemson football legend, bro. Uh you definitely paved the way for a lot of us and left your market, Clemson. You got twenty seconds to answer this question. I'm putting you on the spot. Golly. This is our last question. This is how we roll now. Okay. Make your Clemson defense right now, off the top of your head. Clemson defense, a Swinney era. All time? Right here. All time, Swinney era. So g give me, give me, give me D tackles, linebackers, DBs, and we out. I uh, definitely want Grady Jarrett. <laughs> Take that man right. in a Nally, he'll kill somebody for you. Grady Jarrett, uh, Christian Wilkins for sure. Um, I'm going to probably take Cleland Farrell. He's a dog. Um, AB, AB is nice. You know, I loved our freaking our D line. Um, Carlos has two, I'm too many. Um, I'd take them four on the D line. If I'm forgetting somebody, I'm just going to text me, piss me off, or they cuss me out. Uh, me at Mike for sure. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to have senior year Isaiah Simmons and then mm. boy, Stefan Anthony at Will. Me, me and Stefan at Mike and Will. I played some Will. So if, if Stefan wants Mike, that's cool. Stefan, I mean, uh, I ain't seen a better him and Isaiah, the most athletic guys I've ever seen. Right. Oh, uh, let's see. Back in, back in, back in. Um, I'm trying to think like freshman and sophomore year, some guys we had. Dude, Robert, this is a, he's a safety. Robert Smith was super, super smart. Uh, helped line up a lot of stuff. Um, Robert, 
Um, hey, this is going to throw some people off. Nolan Turner. Nolan Turner was super, super smart. Hey, buddy made plays. I want guys that are reliable, you know? Yeah. Um, Nolan, uh, and I may put Nolan at, uh, if we go to whatever package, I may put Nolan – uh, at at nickel, I could put I'm going to interchange uh, Nolan with uh, Nolan and Zay. Um, let's see. I know I'm forgetting some guys too. And at DB at corner, you had some lockdown guys. Agent at- Terrell, Agent a- Terrell, he's got to be in there. Right? He's like yeah, the a- best corner. Agent Terrell. Um, I'm gonna tell probably- Brian Carter, bro. Like over I love Ryan. Ryan's good people. Um, you know, like he's got he has always good effort. He is super yeah. smart. Uh, I'm gonna take my dog YC, you know. Uh all right, and it, there you have it. Look, somebody's gonna be mad, but they, look, it's on the spot. That's it's right, no, of, we, got, we got a lot of good players to pick from. So, bro, thank you for your time. Good I question. love you, bro. Yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna do this again. I'm gonna have to bring you back. There's, there's so much we can get into. There's so many more stories I want to get into, but we'll bring you back. Comes to fans, hopefully, y'all enjoyed this. Uh we'll be back next week with somebody different. So Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. I'll, uh,